I hope this isn't a waste of our time, guys. This is a video called Sailing, a skill concept and real plugin. plug-in. That, um, yeah, uh, what's the guy's name? Nellamingus. There's someone in the Discord who was tagging me constantly saying, check out the video. Um, so this better be worth our time watching. Uh, this is by uh, Screet Mong Mongi with 135 subscribers. 8.8k views in two days. It's not bad. Let's um, see if it's worth it. Let me know how the volume is too because I can turn it up if I need to. All right, boys. Sailing, a skill concept and rune light plugin. Hi, I'm Gnome. Fuck me. And welcome to Sailing, a skill concept and rune light demo. Along with my friend Gentle Tractor, I'd like to present our own version of a sailing skill, packaged with a rune light plugin that will allow you to test out the very basics of how this skill might work. Please note that this presentation has been released alongside another video where General Tractor and I go into greater depth on each of Sailing's components and our reasoning behind them in an unscripted sit-down chat. Alright, so as long as this isn't a waste of time, we might have to look at that as well. Shout out to Tractor though. And uh, there's a Brunite plugin already, apparently, that you can check out the skill. or well, the basic fundamentals. Interesting. Wouldn't mind uh, checking that out if this turns out to be worth watching. Before we formally begin, please recognize that there are limitations as to what I could do with the Runelight plugin. Limitations of time, talent, and technology. Things that presumably wouldn't be lacking in an official sailing skill. Well, so probably also limitations of it being a good idea. You guys know my stance on sailing. I think sailing is a terrible idea for the game uh, in terms of skill, but as a concept or as content itself is excellent. So um, I don't want to shit on this guy too hard, but... You may have wasted your time if you think this is going to be a skill, but let's see what you've done. Special limitations include a lack of proper animations, yep. or the fact that Runelight can't make your camera track your boat as it does normally your character, or that the plugin isn't as feature complete as I initially desired. I hope these issues don't prove too distracting from this presentation or the plugin once it's in your hands. What the hell is this plugin doing? At the end of this video, we'll discuss what's actually in the plugin and how it works. But first, let's chat about the full skill proposal. All right. Sailing is a skill that takes place in the real game overworld. Unlike many concepts out there, this version of sailing takes a very integrated, grounded approach, rather than tucking a skill behind instances or into one corner of the world. This means like a mini game means that you'll be traversing already familiar waters on boat. Expect to pass into the shadow of the Great Wizard's Tower, swing by and say hello to the players fishing at Catherby, sail through and insult the crab slayers of Karend. Or join with your friends and make the great circumferential trek around the entirety of the main continent. Why don't you just teleport? Why why don't you just fairy ring to the wizard's tower? Or or Catherby teleport to, to the people fishing? Or, or use the Xerix Talisman to get to the Corend Crabs. So how Less inventory work? space used? Did you just say that? Less inventory space used? Work. While on the water, your player will be transformed Boats into and a small boat like a cog. A small medieval vessel with a single so sail. So the plugin's doing this. The overworld is reserved for small vessels only. Large vessel sailing is something we'll discuss later. Once you've debarked, you're given a control <laughs> menu with a few simple controls. Instead of using a point-and-click system, a sailboat will automatically move on its own in the direction it's pointing. Use the wheel buttons to turn left or right while moving or anchored in place. Man, this just seems like a lot your of effort. speed is also under your control. I can't believe a plug-in can do this. In the corner indicates the direction the wind is going, as well as the direction of your boat. Bit Align your triggering. boat with the wind just to go faster, relax. or more carefully modulate your speed with the sail speed controls. Alternatively, a toggle exists to enable keyboard controls. I, you... I, look, if this is somewhat like if if I could download a plugin right now and do this on Moonlight, I'm just impressed that someone can do that. That you could just literally make your own overlay over the RuneScape client. Obviously, like the boat's going out to the water, but my character's staying still invisible on my screen. Like the server's like, oh yeah, you guys standing next to this bush right here. But like on my camera, I could just see an invisible like, like there's a boat the server doesn't know is there. It's just like floating around. And that's why the camera doesn't follow it. I'm assuming. And you've got a your little control panel here. But it it just seems like a lot of like I just feel like 
this is like people are trying too hard to force this idea into the game it's not a very good idea this is a lot of work and a lot of effort for a plugin but i'm gonna keep watching because uh, i want to see what else is in this video <laughs> yeah. room to experiment with different control schemes and find what works best for you and those are the fundamental basics of how sailing works it's intended to be simple enough that your former 2007 cells would understand, I, I don't but also lay the groundwork for more complex activities that might appeal to an audience looking for a little more excitement. Like writing, which you can do without sailing. Yes, yeah, so I'm making so the hot air balloon travel. Sailing. Yeah. To begin, <laughs> you'll first need a boat. Like oh, many other tools, boats come in tiers. Oh, good. To the boats are made of wood. Who would have fucking guessed? Wood. When starting out, you can either buy a boat from a portmaster located at any of the major in-game ports, or build it yourself with construction. Higher sailing levels will allow you to sail higher level boats. I'm gonna say it again, but I'm gonna but slightly differently this time. I think anyone that uses or that is leaning on the idea of sailing and you could use the in-game ports for sailing, and this would be where you buy a boat. I think it is lazy thinking. I think you are thinking too far inside the box of your own little world of what what you think would be cool if you want to play shit like this go play a private server because this is not a good idea if this was a good idea they would have done it a long time ago they would have done it in rs3 it, it, this would have been done this is not a good idea this is not a good idea for a skill i think if you do this right not the way this guy's pitching it i think if if you do the whole exploration thing right it can be fun but making it a skill makes it a, cho a chore excuse me it makes it something people have to want to grind or at least want to put themselves through grinding to be able to max or gain access to new content. And if it's just going to be let like click shit in your fucking control panel so you can move three tiles at a time in a boat, not moving at 45, 50 kilometers an hour, depending on which direction the wind's going, you're just wasting my time. I may as well just teleport around the place. Like I'm not going to enjoy it. How are you going to get XP? By just traveling to different islands? It, it just makes... It, it's just lazy thinking, in my, in my opinion. The Black G boat would look nice. It would be. It would look nice. Have you ever seen the Bard skill? Someone came up with it on Reddit a while ago. It involved playing on tick and getting a good way to learn the tick system. Right. That sounds like shit. You can take more damage and store more drops and resources acquired while sailing. Whichever option you choose, you'll be able to use the that boat good, to yeah, get on the water from any boat launch. Boat launches are the start and end point of sailing, and represent numerous in-game spots where it's safe to launch a sailboat. Most of these are as simple as a good spot of beach, but will also include most docks and ports around the game world. But I can just go to Fossil Island, right-click boat, quick travel. Volume's bad because I can hear it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right though, like why would I use, why would I go here to use a boat on Fossil Island? When I could just right click quick travel. Or I could just go to a like a charter ship port, right click, quick travel. And I've done my diaries so I can do it for free, or it's like eight hundred coins or something. Gonna need sixty seven to go back to Vorkarth. It it just doesn't I think boats are not the answer because you could just right click quick travel everywhere. Boats are in the game. Charter boats, what, what, I, I don't know, dude. Maybe I'm not pronouncing it right. Look, it's not a skill because, fuck that. It's not a skill because it's already in the game. What, you're going to add, you're going to make using quick travel on boats more of an, a chore now? What's going to stop, like, if I, why would I go from Fossil Island by boat to somewhere when I can just right click the boat and go to where I want to go or just teleport from the bank? There needs to be a need more than a, here's an island off the coast of uh, Kuren where you can go to and you can catch chin chompers. Like, I could also do that in the, in the Western Province area inside a cave I unlocked for doing my diaries. No! Do note that you'll be restricted from landing at boat launches. Oh, I'll be fucking restricted! Well, shit! What was the point in doing Dragon Slayer 2? D D dig site quest? Bone voyage? Shit! you don't have access to. For example, the denizens of Taranwin wouldn't permit you from landing in their region until- Well, I don't need to! I could just chart the- Look at the guy in the black! I could just charter a ship! Why would I bring my shitty little boat here? He's got a big boat! 
This isn't Pirates of the Caribbean. I can't just walk in like Jack Sparrow. This is for the tile lock players? No, they'll have to unlock each tile of water before they can use it. We finished regicide. Now, how do you level up sailing? Oh, let me guess. You sail. Amounts of sailing XP are granted whenever you're actively moving on the water. Right. This can sustain you for the first few levels as you get the hang of... Right. So guess what my son's doing next year when this skill is released? He's just pressing there, and then he's pressing there, and he's going to sit there doing that eight hours a day. We're going to be 99 by the end of the day, boys. Let's go. Locking all content and saying it to you, that's good. Waterlocked Iron Man? Yeah. Dude, tile lock players are going to have a hard time playing this game. Sailing's controls, but tapers off quickly relative to XP per level scaling. You can also pick up shipping contracts from a port master at any port, which sees you delivering a crate of goods to another port by water. Contracts are much better experience and benefit from good use of the basic sailing mechanics to complete them quickly. On completion of a contract, you're rewarded with a mixture of GP and doubloons How long does it take? sailor's currency. When purchasing from shops, doubloons are valued at 1 GP each, but any goods purchased with them don't decrease the actual shop stock, increasing the effective available st That's a cool idea. A certain currency used... And it doesn't have to be related to sailing, just anywhere. Just a certain currency for doing certain tasks, and you can buy shit that doesn't de decrease shop stock. That's not a bad idea. I kind of like that. There's one good thing in this video so far. It's like using a... I don't know where you'd incorporate it, but that'd be pretty cool somewhere. I don't know. I just like that idea. That'd be cool. That'd be good for my runes when I'm buying runes from worlds. Stock, well, Tockle, for example. Imagine if it did it with Tockle. Maintaining lower costs. The onyx. Both regular sailing and shipping contracts are fairly relaxed activities, mm -hmm. requiring okay. low levels of attention. Good. While easy and accessible to any player anywhere, they're not the most efficient. Guys, it doesn't matter that the skill's bad. It doesn't matter because you can AFK it. It's accessible and it's easy. You can just sit there and chill. If Kren had their own currency, like Proof has shards, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. Like if you use crystal shards or whatever, it's like one shard per room pouch or whatever. No, that'd be too much. I know, but like, like a, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Hear me out, mahogany homes, but on water. Nah, it's got to be AFK, dude. That's why it works. Into rewarding training methods. Okay. Now, one of the main benefits of sailing is being able to get around some parts of the world much faster than before. Teleporting is the fast. What? I have. Look at this. I have a necklace on, games necklace. I can reach five areas here faster than any fucking boat made of wood could. Don't even try to, like, don't, like, I'd, I'd have a better time fucking home teleporting. Don't even try to, to argue that with anyone. Come on. Rather do this than agility, mining, room crafting, smithing, fletching, pretty much all skills. Right, but agility, mining, room crafting, fletching, and smithing can benefit you. Whereas if this doesn't come with the next, like, six raids, There'd be no point leveling this shit at all. At top speeds, you'll expect to sail twice as fast as running, and can travel through large swaths of previously unnavigable terrain. Twice as- it's still teleporting, it's still faster. Have you been to a player owned house? This will especially help lower level players get around the world faster. Well, why? Because they've got a level sailing. So have access to innumerable teleports. Look at that. You, you just told us that it's faster, a faster way to travel. And then you gave us the portal nexus and two pendants with unlimited charges on the side. Being able to dot boats around the map and then have them act as a bank. See, that's, ideas like that would be cool. You see, well, what, like, the ideas like that is great. You could use the, the, like, a, as a, as a, like a side bank or something, like a separate, a smaller bank or whatever. And uh, that, that's totally fine. But I don't think it should be incorporated into a skill when there are infinitely better ideas out there. I've seen better ideas now since the, 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 the survey came out. I think this is a lazy, lazy idea for an excuse, uh, an excuse, a, a lazy excuse for a skill, sorry. Um, I think the concept of sailing is, is, is good and can work in the game, but don't try to sell me this movement and fast travel bullshit. Like, you can already fast travel on pretty much any boat in the game. What are you going to... You're going to give me new places to fast travel? Are you going to fucking lock the fast travels behind a new skill now so I can't get to Fossil Island unless I just use the dig side pendant teleport? Like, come on, man. this is We're way too late in the game for this shit.
Sailing also offers some new fast travel options. Fast travel, like the uh, the spirit trees, would be available from any boat launch to any port shown here with the appropriate sailing level. At the highest sailing levels, players can even select. Like, this, this is fundamentally flawed simply by just having 83 construction, which most players already have. This you might be able to get this faster, but 83 construction also offers a hell of a lot more content, right? Custom fast travel is a cool idea. Could be a cool idea, but it's only to ports. How many ports do you use, Will? When's the last time you went to a port? When's the last time you used any any of the ports on this map? Like, I don't use this port anymore. I've never used this port. I haven't used this port since I've had the agility for, for Zora. Unless I need to look at a clue scroll or something. You know? This doesn't get used. The fuck is that? Nothing. There's no ports here. You know, it, it's just like like void. You you even teleport to the void to, to the pest control place. You don't even use the fucking boat there. Like, you know, this doesn't count. That's Temporos. You know, I use this guy. I used to use this guy when I went to Temporos. Well, they're gonna lock that behind the fucking skill now. You know, the port and ghost town to stock up uh, Carol's biomo. Never done it in leagues. Oh, in leagues. Oh, there you go. Not in leagues now, girl. Sailing versus flying or gliders, same shit. I just, I, I, I think, I think it's a lazy idea. It'd be cool, but I think it's just, it's beaten by already easy to travel content in the game. Fast travel almost anywhere would be cool. Yeah, but we can already do that with, with player in house. Just use like Anubis's house, and you've got everywhere you need to go. Jewelry box gives you everything you need. Few boat launches to add as a port of destination. Does this? Uh, has anyone thought about when it comes to sailing? Do we include like the? The, the little rowboats you make to go from Lumbridge to Edgeville and into the wilderness. I know it's not exactly sailing, but it's still a boat made of wood. Does that count? Or do we just ignore ignore the, the canoes? Continue on with new activities. Trials are extensions of basic sailing that test and hone your handle the mechanics. Mm, okay. Across the game world, there are a number of trial areas. Agility. Here we go. A, an original idea. Let's go. Carpet riding in the desert looks faster, to be honest. <laughs> Dude, I fucking hate carpet riding. But at least it's free. Areas set up by local mariners. Areas of dense obstacle courses. You are expected to sail through the trial as fast as possible, <laughs> with faster times granting more XP. Each time you complete a trial, the designated path is randomly redrawn through a list of preset paths to add some variety. Trials are a very efficient way of oh, training geez. sailing, but require a deeper knowledge of the mechanics. Quick acting to navigate through the course. Oh, it's the deeper knowledge of the mechanics. It's just left, right, speed up, slow down, really. It's four buttons. Without hitting obstacles and tight control of your sail speed. Personal and global bests are kept for each path of each trial, offering performance feedback for self-improvement and comparison against other players. Mm. Mm. Naval combat is much like regular combat in that you can fight against NPCs, each of you being able to dish out and receive damage. Your boat's cannon has a set range, and if your target is in range, you can hit the fire cannon button to send a cannonball their way. Mm. To destroy other vessels... So it's just another dumbass reason for me to make cannonballs now. I don't want to do that shit. I don't want to make cannonballs, are you kidding? Are you kidding, man? Now it's becoming a chore. ...therefore, you'll need to have a good handle of your regular ship controls to outmaneuver your opponents. The enemies you'll find on the water would be varied much like those you're already familiar with. What happens if you crash into land? Like, what, what if you're going full speed into the dirt? Do you beach it? Different levels, strengths, and mechanics. You'll find merchants which flee when attacked, pirates which attack back, and other monsters including your regular slew of krakens, sirens, sea serpents, and the like. Rewards from naval combat should be much like current PVM, with each enemy having their own table of random drops. Mm. As something unique to pirate vessels, ammunition crates can drop as well, which unlock the ability to smith new cannonball variants for your boat to make naval combat a bit more thoughtful. These would also work in a dwarf multi-cannon, granting useful alternatives for PVM. I'm now, sorry. if we are introducing the player. Listen to that again. Ammunition crates can drop as well, which unlock the ability to smith new cannonball variants for your boat to make naval combat a bit more thoughtful. 
Okay, so you've got different, you got different sorts of ammunition here. Reduces the target's defense with the cursed shot, the canister shot. Deals greater damage to larger targets. Grape shots, yeah, grape shots. I, got, I, I know about grape shots because I played Bloons Tower Defense 4. Um, cheap and mass pro, 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 producible? Producable. Producible. Produce. Produce. Producible? Produce. It'd be an S, wouldn't it? Producible. I don't know what that means. Only targets nearby enemies. Immobilize the target for a short time with a chain shot and metal debris. Cheap and mass pro, pro, producible. Uh, low damage, quality, quantity per bar increases with higher tier bar. Any bar you want, that's good. Where the fuck do you use a cannon where you need to reduce defenses though? Other people's ships. These would also work in a dwarf Apparently. multi cannon, granting useful alternatives for PVM. Oh, in a dwarf multi cannon. Um, Ulm. Now, if we are introducing the player to water as new traversable terrain, yep. just like any new area expansion, that area needs to be fleshed out. Therefore, it should touch on various skills with sailing as the vehicle to act out said skills. These activities I've broadly called saltwater skilling. Mm -hmm. Under the saltwater skilling umbrella, we have offshore fishing, which grants access to unique fish with additional effects when eaten. Dredging, a method of mining for bulk ores at lower XP rates. Seabird hunting, essentially harpooning seabirds for sacred feathers, which grant fire making and prayer XP when burned. And okay. coral farming. A new farming activity that grants access to new coral jewelry to add to your usual enchanted jewelry collection. I mean, these are pretty cool ideas, these concepts. You'll notice the number of tools are available in the UI. Switch your tool to match the appropriate activity, whether it's the cannon for firing, the rod for fishing, or a harpoon for hunting. Please note that due to time restraints, only the cannon and fishing rod are currently functional in the plugin. Yeah, I just and feel finally, like it's a lot, there's a lot to... Like... It's gonna. If it's like if this came into the game, this is just again hypothetically say this past and it came into the game, it would just be. I feel like we need to keep it simple, not simple to the point that it's like what the hell is this basic, but like, let's not. Get a, a highly, complex, mini game and cram it into one little panel. Let's not do that. I don't think that's super smart. He lost your harpooning seabirds. Well, maybe he meant birds in the sea rather while on the water are automatically stored in your boat's inventory which scales in size with the tier of boat redwood boats for example can carry up to 28 extra items these items can be withdrawn from your boat at any bank before we tackle the last few sailing activities okay. let's discuss one of the skill's biggest rewards equipable charms it was often the case that sailors of the old world would carry lucky charms and other superstitious baubles hoping it would grant them protection and strength during dangerous voyages. Charms can be found once you have the appropriate sailing level as random rewards from completing shipping contracts, monster drops, or from the saltwater skilling activities. They are equipable in the new charm slot new and slot. grant fairly straightforward bonuses to melee, ranged, magic, and prayer. They're dropped in an incomplete form, okay. requiring smithing, crafting, runecraft, or prayer to complete. While the complete charms are tradable, they do require their appropriate skills to equip. Charms of protection grant melee defense bonuses. Charms of striking grant Give me some of that boy puss. Bonuses. Shout out to my boy Onishiri. Big up the gains and keep repping the king's stream. I don't know who Onishiri is, but thank you, Olin. I appreciate the, uh, the, five, the five pounds. Thank you. Charms of shielding and piercing do the same for ranged. And charms of warding and evocation do the same for magic. Charms of faith grant small prayer bonuses while other prayer charms grant unique buffs. Next, we... Rapid heal, res rapid restore, protect item and preserve no longer drain prayer. Using a special attack restores 10% of your special attack energy used as hit points. Praying the correct protection prayer reflects one damage back to the attacker. Some cool ideas. Bonuses, while other prayer charms grant unique buffs. Next, we have treasure hunts, All right. which, as the name implies, are essentially clue scrolls on the water. Mm -hmm. clue scrolls, the issue with expanding good. the current clue scroll system is that each update that's added great new cosmetics has simultaneously diluted the current reward pool, causing all of the previous rewards to become harder to obtain. Treasure hunts would allow us to safely expand the current system by generating a completely new reward pool. Why don't they just have Grandmaster clue scrolls? Problem solved and to test out different clue types rather than incessant puzzle boxes. 
you would collect treasure maps while doing activities on the ocean, mm -hmm. and the hunts themselves would take place primarily on the water and shores. How's that related to sailing, though? Pirates used to hunt for treasure, and they'd have a map. And on the map, there'd be a big X that marks the spot to dig. It's true. You should look it up. A couple ideas for new clue types would be chasing down a ghostly pirate's vessel, deciphering a coded map, mm -hmm. or sailing a particular pattern in a certain area. Okay. And finally, we come to the parts of a hypothetical sailing skill that tends to gather the most interest. New I don't know. It's like, does it really gather the most interest, the sailing skill? I feel like it's just content creators talking about it, like, without using their fucking brains. I don't know. It's just... I haven't seen a single good skilling concept for sailing yet. Not one. Not one that's been thought about. Everyone's like, we should do new islands. It'd be so cool. Fossil Island came to the game. Current came to the game without a new skill. What's to stop them just doing that instead? Like, you don't need to unlock sailing to have new islands on the map. You can just, you can just add them like Fossil Island was. Like Current was. And you could just quick travel there instead of making it a chore to get to an island where there's a guild of cyclopses, which, to be honest with you, sounds fucking pointless because you can just go to the, the Warriors Guild, which is full of cyclops. We already have one of those. And expeditions, or randomly generated island chains. However, this is also where the scope of what a sailing skill is and what it does broadens indefinitely. A new island or dungeoneering-like and the, sorry, the argument that it's uh, it's has infinite potential is is some bullshit. That's some copium shit right there. It has infinite potential. RuneScape has infinite potential. You can't use that as a selling point. Like the skill is never ending. There's so much you could do with it. Sure, that you could just have as many raids as you want in the game. But that, that requires dev time, that requires people to enjoy it, and that means, that, that means people have to give a shit about it. If it's bad, no one's going to want it, they're going to stop expanding on it. Just because something has infinite potential doesn't mean it should be infinitely produced. If it's shit, stop doing it. I'll take summoning over what I'm looking at right here, well then you're an idiot, because summoning is just as fucking bad. Um, magic is, has unlimited potential, everything in this game has unlimited potential. Up until the skill cap of 99 plus whatever max boost there is. Game could constitute anything. Any collection of activities, bosses, or rewards, where sailing is merely the vehicle for engaging in these places rather than the primary focus. Already the collective community consciousness has constituted thousands of ideas for what these activities might look like. Hey, it's your boy! Yeah! Obviously he didn't watch it because I pretty much said this idea is fucking dumb as shit. But that's your boy! Yeah! Armoring your large vessel with equipment and cannons. That's happening! Or hiring a specialized crew to tackling random events at sea and establishing a base of operations on a randomly generated island. General Tractor and I have found many of these ideas inspiring and would love to see them. To be honest, if, if you and General Tractor are finding these ideas inspiring, uh, inspire somewhere else. Try to draw inspiration from somewhere else because sailing is not the play. Realized in game. However, the focus of today was to outline what the sailing skill actually is at its core, how it is trained, shit, and how it's acted out, and to keep the proposed development time of a basic sailing skill beneath that which would be required from essentially a Dungeoneering 2.0 or a Raid. No! It's four on water. A oh, Raid's four on water? What, you, you're telling me you want this new Raid or Dungeoneering locked into this skill? I don't know how many times I have to say it, but I'm going to say it again. Drop the skill shit, okay? If you want sailing that badly, and it's done well, give us a whole new, like, concept. A, a whole new menu, a whole new way to, to partition it away from the main focus of skilling in the game. That way it's something you can tackle if you want in the meantime. It's another way you can play RuneScape. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to start locking you behind quests... And, and other skills and raids immediately the second it comes into the game. You can build off of it like they built off Karend with their own lore and their own way to, to level, and, and, and like to earn favor, okay? And then you get, um, you get rewards based on the favor. D don't get me wrong, the way to earn favor is fucking horse shit. But if you get your own, even if you just make your own tab like this and you have your own log, 
your own combat tasks, or this is all purely savings, uh, sailing. Combat achievements wasn't a skill. It's a great addition. It's a new way to tackle different sorts of contents, mostly focused around combat, of course. But it, it created so much content for the game, so much content for players, with an insane amount of rewards, okay, which they then buffed, of course, okay. It tackles all bosses, okay. It's primarily focused on combat. I'll, I'll keep saying that. But the idea that they brought in a new way to tackle combat in the game without adding a skill, without overcomplicating it, they just made a, a, a they just made a book and said, "Here you go. Here's a bunch of shit. Go do the task when you can. Do the same thing for sailing or exploration, whatever you want to call it. Give us another book, another log, and you get a boat, and you can just go do your thing. And as you progress through that, not through XP, but through tasks, you can unlock better ways to." Uh, expand on sailing and benefit from it because that has more infinite potential than capping it at the skill of 99 because combat tasks can that number is never going to stop going up collection log that number is never going to stop going up quests achievements they're never going to stop going up because they're not locked behind skills there's no skill called questing there's no collecting skill for the collection log it's a book that's at 1443 now and it was at like 1200 on release and it's going to keep going up it's never going to stop. But all your skills are going to cap at 99. And if you want sailing to be as big as it is, it needs to be bigger than a skill. You want your infinite potential, you make a fucking log for it. It's that simple. There is not an argument out there that can counter that. And you know I'm right. It doesn't matter who you are. You know I'm right. If there was an argument that can counter, counter it, you, you, would have, you would have come up one by now. That is the play if you want sailing or exploration. An update which, alone, would likely require several years to properly realize. And so, to summarize, these are fantastic ideas. No, they're not. There's like one or two cool ideas I liked, but they're not. They're really not. But today, we're merely ensuring that we've solidified the foundations of a sailing skill before building up to the next level. Maybe stop at the solidifi solidification of what you've done here. Just... This is enough, I think. This is enough. What I've seen here is enough to know that this is not the answer. And that is our main pitch for a sailing skill. All right. Once again, we've also posted a video of us rambling about this topic in full, breaking down each section. I don't know if I could watch that. I might find the video, see how long it is, and, like, I don't know if I could watch that without, like, bullying some of the ideas that, they, that I'm worried they're going to come up with. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I can watch that. Action ...and discussing our overarching design goals, which you can find linked below. Let's change gears and quickly talk about the plugin. All right, talk At about the plugin. At the time of this video's release, yep. the plugin will have been submitted to RuneLight for review, sure. meaning it's likely several weeks away from approval. Oh, so it's not even in the to game To start, yet. you simply have to right-click over a spot of water and select Build Boat to spawn a boat under your control. Mm -hmm. For the purposes of this plugin, I've let you start sailing from anywhere, not just from a boat launch. Okay, cool. Once you spawn a boat, your combat tab will change to a sailing tab, where all your controls lie as I described gone. before. That's back. Okay. Within the plugin, you'll be able to spawn several NPC dummies to fire at by okay. right-clicking the water and selecting the appropriate NPC. Okay, cool. To get a sense of your cannon's range, you can toggle the cannon range button to enable the overlay. I mean, Hitting that's fire, not a very long fire. range. My blowpipe fires longer than that. Like, the cannon should be able to shoot. More than 10 tiles, I would say like 15, 20 tiles for the cannon. I feel like cannons have a lot more punch, a lot more gunpowder in them than... I mean, even the dwarf multi-cannon fires longer than that. Oh no, it's kind of shit, dude. Are you cannon if there is a valid target? Around the game world are several preset NPC spawns. Uh, I agree. I don't like the clunky interfaces either, but you, regardless of the context, I think you should give credit where it's it's a plugin that has been made that's like not even approved yet. It's in heavy beta, and it's like they're basically working off of what your client is letting you see. Like the server can't see it happening, so it's going to be clunky no matter what. It's very basic. It's just to give you a rough idea. But if I'm honest with you, um, no, terrible. It's including crocodiles in Brimhaven, seagulls at Catherby and south of the Karen Woodland, krakens south of Remington, and a fun little surprise at Corsair Cove. 
An additional means of control is available by enabling the keyboard control toggle. This works very similarly to your mouse controls using a basic WASDA system, with A and E turning your boat left and right, and W and S increasing or decreasing your sail speed, and spacebar is your tool or fire button. You'll notice- I just feel like that's not very- I don't know. RuneScape? I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just me being uh, an asshole now because of the, how much I don't really support this idea, but I don't think, um, mm, yeah, rip mobile players. Several other buttons which, due to time restraints, are currently non-functional. The simple idea is that these are your tools for engaging in other activities on the water, okay. like harpooning seabirds, dredging yeah, so the sea the floor from the middles with a net, he did say spotting treasures as part of treasure hunts, and the ship inventory button which would open up to show all the drops and resources you've collected on your voyage. Feel free to spend some time getting to know the controls. I will not be doing that. You may that. find it helpful to use Runelite's detached camera plugin, or play with the keyboard control scheme in the config to get your ideal setup. Mm. If you'd yeah. like, you can also try offshore fishing at Southern Karen Woodland for Marlin, at Mudskipper Point for Grouper, or at Catherby for Sturgeon. Additionally, if you'd like to test how familiar uh, you are with the sailing mechanics... I've seen enough. So, some tough love for you, buddy. Um, Mr. Squid Monge and what's the what's the guy's name? Something Tractor. This is a um idea based purely on copium. This is a terrible idea for a skill. I I you know spoke about earlier what I think. If you want this exploration sailing style of content to come to the game, that's a message to everyone out there. Come up with these ideas. You need to you need to take it away from the idea of it being a skill and make it more of um more of a, of its own separate I don't know I don't know what the word is but like you know its own log its own its own tasks its own content okay its own concept um, a mini game if you will yeah like an yeah essentially like a mini game right would you would you call like current favor and, 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 and collection logs and, and combat achievements mini game not really it's just like its own its own thing isn't it I don't know what it would be called its own content yeah um, but I think this has single-handedly made sailing look less appealing. I do agree with uh, Betty. Like, it, sailing's already been a terrible idea, but this this video itself has made it even more shit, in my opinion. Um, and my opinion is often the one that matters. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, I will link the video, however, for those who want to have a look at it. Don't um, go and, um, like, bully them or make any, like, rude comments. Like, I, I don't want people to, to harass um, creators like this said, you know, you're welcome to make the content you want uh, just as much as I'm welcome to give my opinion I just think it's shit. I just don't want to see people from my community going over and saying your idea is dog shit Kill yourself because I'm I don't want to No, don't do that um, But if you do want to watch the content if you did like it if you if you wanted to show your support the link is there in the Chat and I'll also put in the description when I upload this for those who do want to go and show some support but however for me on this idea, I will not be supporting it. I think it's crap. But thank you. At the very least, at least there's people like this in the community putting this much effort into the game. That's true. You can show that. You can see that there is passion. This guy's really passionate about it. You're just passionate about the wrong things. Your heart's in the right place, um, but your brain is not. I think that is fair. As long as the new school doesn't involve standing in one spot for hours on end, I'm happy uh, uh, or clicking once every 10 seconds. Yeah, I'm sure that's not going to happen at all. But thank you. Appreciate that, Screet Mongi and Mr. Tractor, whatever your name was. Gentle Tractor, that was the one. Let's have a look at this other video. Let's, I just want to see how long it is. 3 hours and 41 fucking minutes. Holy cow. Oh, I, I don't know if I've got that much in me, man. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, if it was like forty minutes, maybe, but three hours. Like, that's that's a, that's a good, you know, that's a stream right there. Too many timestamps. Well, that's so that way you can skip to them. But if it was like forty minutes, I probably would have been like, yeah, I could probably watch that. But three hours and forty minutes to, I, if I was, um, if I liked the idea more, I probably would. But not today, no sir. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him. God damn. Fuck, mate. Look at that boy. It's huge. Oh, <laughs>